Hi, I'm Dr. Terry Bruce. I'm the manager of the Jordan Hall Imaging Facility in the Biological Sciences Department at Clemson University. And today I just wanted to show you some options for staining cells. So we'll start with some nuclear stains. Now there are lots of different stains that you can use for different organelles. For example, these are nuclear and they include things like DAPI, which is going to be a blue nuclear stain, Perpidium iodide, or PI, which is going to be a red nuclear stain. But you can also get nuclear stains in almost any color of the rainbow with the cyto dyes. The cyto dyes include red fluorescent dyes 17, uh, 59 through 64, and 11. And green cyto stains include cyto 11 through 14. 16, 21, 24, 25. You can get a number of these. These are great for fact sorting or just looking at bacteria in, uh, in, in slides. And you can get these in samplers. So for example, these are a cyto red fluorescent sampler kit. And in these you get several of your cyto dyes that you can then try and see what's going to work best with your facility uh, filters that you have available. You also should talk to your facility manager about picking a particular dye based on what they're going to be able to image in the facility. Next there are a number of other organelle stains that are wonderful for using for fluorescent microscopy. For example, this is a package from Life Technologies of 48 phalloidin. It's Alexaflor 48, meaning it's green labeled phalloidin. Phalloidin is a fungal toxin that binds to the sides of filamentous actin and freezes the actin cytoskeleton in place. It's a wonderful co stain to give you an idea of where things are located within the cell. It gives you the architecture of the cell. This actually, for the phalloidin comes in almost any color that you could think of. So if you have specific secondary antibodies to proteins that you're interested in, you can pick another color phalloidin so that you can have the actin cytoskeleton stained as well. In addition for live cell imaging, there are a number of wonderful options for staining different organelles. All of these you need to make sure that you read the manufacturer's instructions very carefully. For example, Mitotracker Red, which is a red dye that stains the mitochondria, is going to need to be uptaken into the cells for a period of time before your imaging begins. This is about a 30 minute incubation. And there are other manufacturer rules that are important, such as not having serum in your media. Sometimes extra lipoproteins in serum will bind up the stain, so you want to make sure you're really reading how to use your stain properly to get the best results. Some other options are for staining the nucleus with live cell imaging. This includes um, Huxt stain solution. You can also label different vesicles, watching things move in and out of the cell. For example, this is a transferrin that is labeled with 48 alexaflor. So this will allow you to watch the transferrin the cells. Receptor uptake. This is low density lipoprotein. This is uh, complexed with a red dye. It's called DII. This is great also for watching trafficking in cells. And finally we have a lysis sensor. The lysis sensors come in a number of different colors. They also uh, may have a pH indicator associated with them, so they were in there in different uh, vesicles or vacuoles of the cell. They'll change color depending on the pH inside that vesicle or vacuole. So these are also a wonderful uh, tool for live cell imaging. Finally, just a word about doing immunofluorescent staining. The main thing that you need to be concerned with immunofluorescence is selecting the correct primary antibody. And when you get that primary antibody, making sure that you're using the correct concentration of the antibody. In order to do this, it's probably a good idea not to just look through old grad students' notebooks and decide, oh, well, that's what so-and-so did. 
but to actually use your new antibody at different concentrations and do some tests with it. It's going to save you a lot of time and heartache in the future. Your primary antibodies obviously go on first to your protein of interest and then you choose a secondary antibody that is brought up against the animal that your primary antibody was raised in. For example, this is a rabbit anti-ha primary antibody. And so I have goat anti-rabbit antibodies for my secondary antibody. And all of these are conjugated to some type of fluorophore. This is a 488. This is a 594. This is a 350. So I have blue, red, or green options for coloring my antibody or my protein of interest in my cell. There are a number of links on the website that will lead you to antibody companies as well as manufacturers of different stains. And if you ever have any questions, please contact me at Clemson and I'm happy to help. Thanks a lot.